Hi everyone, my name is Andy Patania Matthew. Join me as we learn and unlearn things and make new discoveries. This is Andy's Coveries. The search is on. Today's episode is a discovery of what it takes to be the next Miss Cebu and who could answer that question better than our reigning queen herself, Miss Cebu 2022, Gabriella or Gabby Carvalho. Hi again, Gab. Hi again. It's nice to see you again. Uh, I told you that we were going to do another interview and yes. this happened. So how are you? How's it been since our last Chica Sesh? Well, it's really like an adjustment going back to almost real life. We know mm. we're, almost, we're pretty much back to face-to-face -face class. So I'm really just diving into learning and I'm just excited to graduate med in 2024 mm -hmm. and hopefully be a doctor at that time. So that's pretty much what my focus has really been on lately. Yeah. How has it been juggling med school and your duties as Miss Cebu? Definitely challenging. <laughs> you know, it's it's something that asks like not that many people go through the same exact thing as I do mm. um, but I really just take things one day at a time I've been learning also to say no mm. and I really can't take things anymore so I think um, if anyone could just I guess look up to me mm. like with juggling a bunch of things it's just nice if I can be a reminder to that you don't have to be defined by one thing <laughs> you know just let's just try everything and try new things so yeah that's pretty much my life and your reign is also pretty interesting because it's shorter it is. than the usual length right yeah. because of what happened during typhoon or yes. death right but so far how has been the experience i think it's just really been nice um not only getting to carry of course the title of miss cebu but also to understand how much further my reach has gone since getting the title mm. i don't realize that there are a lot more people who are interested in what i have to say um i've never been big on promoting my social media but on tiktok i'm a really big deep thinker and sometimes i share my thoughts through there and some people will comment like oh you know like i saw you at this place or, mm. or i've been i've been following you since miss mandawi and i'm just so happy to see where you are now so just to understand and also just see the power of what the Miss Cebu crown gives you yeah. in terms of influence. Um, it's really humbling in a way also because of course there's a responsibility that comes with it. And so I'm just really happy that I carry it. And I'm also very happy and excited for the next girl who gets to have that same response. And speaking of the next girl, yes. have it now. <laughs> have it now, Miss yeah. Cebu 2023. Yes. And um, screaming will be on October 29 and 30. And 30, yeah. right? So let's talk about the qualifications for those girls who want to be like you. Tell them what it takes to be the next Miss Cebu. Let's start with the technical requirements first. So um, you need to be what age to be able to join um, Miss Cebu? I believe it's 18 to 25 years old. 18 to old. 25 years old. So I'm like almost there now. Like, I'm at 24, I'm 24 uh, now. So it's like, I can't do it again or else it's kind of like almost yeah. there. <laughs> so 18 to 25 years old and you have to be at least... 5'3 five, five, three. Three in height. Of course, you need to be at least a graduating high school student, a Filipino citizen, yes. of course, a resident of Cebu, should not be an applicant of any other beauty pageant and should not be an employee of the Cebu City government yes. just to avoid any conflict of interest, yeah. right? So just in case they make it to the screening, yeah. what are the tips that you can share to pass the screening? So honestly, I remember my time. I was on the second day and I was the very last person to get interviewed. Really? Yes, because of course, what more? I came from school. So um, I had done my makeup, I went there. And because there were so many ahead of me and knowing that the judges might probably be really tired by the mm. time I walked in, I really just tried to remind myself what my reason was for being there. So if I were to share any tips, it would really just to be like, it's kind of like when you go into research defense, mm. how there's a panel of judges and they seem to be so scary, but you're the one who knows everything about your study. So same thing when you go into a screening, you're the only one who knows everything about you. Like they don't mm. know anything about you. So you're really just there to showcase who you are mm -hmm. on a day-to-day -day basis. And I'm really like not even joking. When I went in there that day, I wasn't shaking. There was no nerves, zero. Because mm. I think I just kept telling myself like, 
you know, I'm just here to just show you guys, like mm. just to say hello and, and for you to see what my heart is and what I love to do. So yeah. I don't think we should be nervous if we really have done our self study as to who we are. True. So yeah. it doesn't look forced, no. Dapat ano lang, be your natural yeah. self. Yeah. And of course, like being someone who's been on a panel of judges, like screening judges before, it's very easy to tell when a person's nervous yeah. or if they're genuine and they're not, or, or if they're not genuine. So I think just there should be no kind of screen of protecting who you are like mm. just show it show everything mm. do you remember the questions that were asked of you during the screening i think i remember i was asked like what my favorite or what part of cebu's tourism would i want to boost and what was your answer i had mentioned the sunset cruise mm. i believe that day um which is funny because i have never even at that time i didn't even ride the sunset cruise yet <laughs> but i had heard about it and i wanted to go on it mm. so i was like okay I'll, if i'll promote this i hope i also get to be on there too mm. yeah but how about for the girls nga first time pag hindi lang mo join og pageant like for you you joined pageants in school before yeah. miss cebu right yeah. for those guys in pinaka first time gini nila what's that certain advice that you'd like to share with them um, for them, I think, you know what, I think they have the highest advantage. Um, they don't have any you pressure. So? There's zero pressure for you to act a certain way because you don't have an expectation. Like, there's no one who has, uh, like, a character reference of yourself before. Yeah. So you're really walking in there as a fresh face, and I think that judges like to see you. Mm -hmm. So maybe the pressure is that they're really excited to see you and want to know what you have to say, but ultimately it's nice to see someone who doesn't have any preconceived notions of what yeah. a pageant person wants mm. so they're really just there to be themselves so it's really as cliche as it is it's really just be yourself <laughs> you know like i wish i could say it in another way that wasn't as cliche but i really think obviously it's not just being yourself but to have done enough work before the pageant that you understand you you mm. and like what makes you scared what makes you anxious and what are you going to do about those times when you're anxious mm. it's really all of that like you have to build up that kind of barricade towards everything that's going to like come on to you during mm. the pageant so if you're saying that it's really best to be your natural self mas maayo gid siguro nga before the screening murag mag self reflection ka what yeah. are really my aspirations in life then compare or study other um, people other yeah Kind of mga pageants, yeah. other performances of Maybe other women. Maybe for like walking and for mm. you know um, anything on stage, you can look up to a girl like Catriona. I look up to Catriona mm. a lot. Um, but if we're talking about Q and A, which is a huge part of Miss Cebu, yeah. you really just have to know not even just yourself, but what are your opinions on on big controversial issues? Because mm. ultimately, I think I, I'm a people pleaser at heart. But when you can't be a people pleaser when you're in a pageant, because like if you're sharing your opinion on something but it's not actually your opinion mm. and you're just sharing it because you know the judges want to hear it it's really clear mm. so if you can just stand your ground on the opinions that you believe in then i think that that's more admirable for someone who's judging take us to the time when you found out that you made it to this screening was it still as special even if you were already crowned as miss mandawe it was still special because i knew that there were around 70 plus girls i believe who screened and just to get the text the like confirmatory text that i was in mm. was a big deal especially because i believe it was at night when i received it so it was like the day after at night so at first i was like why haven't i gotten a text yet like so i'm just gonna yeah because like it would be one thing if i got it in the morning uh. but the second like the day was about to end i think it was like dinner time or something my and you knew other girls up. already received the text i'm Wala pa. not sure because we weren't <laughs> in, we weren't communicating it since we uh, weren't really close yet yeah. so yeah i had no way of knowing if they had received it so i was really just waiting i believe it was like 8 30 p.m mm. almost the end of the day so you're really not expecting a text from anyone at that time but um i just remember showing my parents because we were eating dinner out and they were just of course my parents being there my parents are like sis we already knew that mm. but then for me i was just really really grateful to just have gotten that confirmation yeah so how about what are the tips that you'd like to share for those who would make it to the screening now what, what if they would find out that they're already one of the finalists but because by october there's a few months to prepare yeah. before the coronation night on January, January 11, 11 right? Yeah. So, bye bye said ang ilahang time. So, what do they need to do for the pageant? So, I'm really going to say that I really believe the pageant part, the pre pageant part, is the most tiring part of the journey. Mm. And that's because you're almost every single day you're going to be leaving your house. We're gonna, you're going to be having activities all the more now that it's a lot less stringent with 
restrictions yeah. and all of compared that. Compared to so yours. Compared to us, because we had some that were just online. Mm. So for them, I'm sure they'll be out almost every day, plus a shorter time span for pre pageant. So they really have a lot less time. So just to prioritize sleep. <laughs> um, that's one thing like if you have the opportunity to sleep at 8 30 you better sleep at 8 30. Mm. at me, my time i was studying so i would always be sleeping late but if you can just get the chance to just refresh your body and then wake up the next morning and be open and ready um, i definitely would also suggest to probably just keep a calendar mm. you'll have so many you'll have so many activities that it will be really easy to lose count and lose track of what you're doing so um, maybe just have that as well and just i guess lastly just keep an open mind mm. um, there will be things that pop up when you least expect it sometimes you won't know that there's an activity and suddenly you'll have to run there just keep an open mind and open heart and just be open to learning about cebu and just taking in the whole experience mm. but how about in terms of preparation like do you start mastering how to walk do you start watching videos of Q&As of other beauty pageants? Do you start <laughs> your diet or a fitness routine? Well, what I can say is during my time in Miss Cebu, in terms of diet, it wasn't. I was not dieting. We were just so busy that I ended up losing weight mm. despite like everything. I was eating normally, but just because we were like getting home so late or like you have a super rushing day. I would really just end up, I just lost weight by myself. So you don't have to worry about that. Yes. And then in terms of the walking and stuff, it's really up to you and your, your trainers. Mm. Um, you, if you really, for me, if you really want to win, you need to sacrifice things. So for me, even if we would be done with an, with an activity at like, let's say 8.30 or 9, even if I had school the next day, I would still train until midnight, past midnight, walking. Since for me, that is what I found to be my weakness. Mm. Like I knew that communication wise, I think I was okay. But then for, you know, being on stage and the stage presence, I'm a little bit self-conscious. Mm. So to really just let it all out there is really difficult for me. So I knew I had to train for that. So really just know that everything's temporary so if you really want it you might as well go all out now mm. and then have no regrets when coronation night comes whether or not you win who are your pegs back then when you were training so i did watch a lot of the evening gown competitions of miss universe mm. so not just the philippines candidates but there were like some from spain how the way that their hips move yeah. you know the, the latina walk is very very different that of course the filipinas adapt also um, in terms of question and answer, I was, of course, of course, Catriona, even in just interviews. Um, of course, they're going to have their press presentation. Mm. My tip for that is yeah. that press presentation is not final Q&A. So like you, no? we shouldn't treat it like we're answering a final Q&A. It's really just like, like this, this kind mm. of interview. Casual and good. Casual, like, because press presentation, everyone doesn't know you. So again, they want to know you. So you just answer, like, mm. chill in a chill way. Just be yourself. So there's a time and place for the powerful yeah. kind of answers. And if I may add to that, being yeah. a member of the press myself, yeah. we also know who's genuine or not. Yeah, it's very clear. Boss, so you really just, just have to be yourself when you answer. And speaking of being genuine, what if, for example, you make it as one of the finalists and you're a first timer in the pageant industry, you don't have an advocacy yet. Mm -hmm. Is it too late to start your own advocacy? And do you think that it's okay to start an advocacy just for pageant's sake? Well, I have thought about that a lot. Um, I do believe that people that are helped are, I do believe that people that we help in like no matter what the intention is mm. we're still helping people mm. and it doesn't matter what other people perceive of your actions as long as in the end you're still helping someone so it's okay maybe a girl starts off by doing it for a pageant but the question is does she continue it mm. um, i think that's what's most important because of course pageants are a breeding ground for really building up women who are empowered and can be role models so especially if it's your first time you shouldn't feel pressure that you have to put a pageant out there but you do need again to do the self-work to understand what's important to you and not even what's important to you only but what does cebu need like what mm. gap do you see in cebu that you can provide for so it's okay like if you make one during the pageant it's i know it looks bad sometimes but <laughs> in the end if you still continue in that near then if you still continue it then your heart really shines through mm. in the end so i'm um, sustain yeah, yeah the sustainability yeah, okay what are your greatest takeaways during your reign i know it's not yet over but so far what are the biggest learnings that you've had 
I think because of the life that I live, juggling both medicine and Miss Cebu, um, I just know that there's there's a lot of times where I'm really like beaten down with how tired I am. But what I've always been reminded, like there've been little t little moments that have reminded me along the way that this is really what I'm supposed to be doing and that not many women have the same story as I do that mm. you're pursuing both a very very high level profession while still chasing a dream of being a beauty queen but I actually bumped into this girl in Waterfront once my favorite story um, I was waiting for the elevator it was taking way too long getting impatient but this girl came around the corner and she saw me and she was like are you a model mm. and I of course I didn't tell her no I miss Cebu but <laughs> I just said oh yeah yeah I am and oh. then I was like do you want to be a model she goes I want to be a doctor oh. and I told her I am a medical student like I'm gonna mm. be a doctor soon you don't have to pick one mm. so it was a moment like that where I think I just realized like there are going to be people that are watching you and you, and seeing your struggle and they look up to you for that so it's okay if like sometimes i wish that of course i could have done way more during my reign but we do have projects coming mm -hmm. um within the month but i do think that where i stand has already been like tantamount to who i am and hopefully there are little girls too that realize that they don't have to just pick pageants yeah. they can be a lawyer they can be a doctor they can be a teacher whatever they want so you don't have to just choose one. Like I think as women, we can do a lot of different things. Nice. So complete package, give me <laughs> see, Gabby. Okay. During our last interview, I asked you about your plans for national pageants, yeah. and you told me that you were still looking for a reason to really want it, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Do you already have that reason? I mean, <laughs> that story is one that was, I feel like I've been given a lot of signs. Mm. And I'm still not like completely set on something yet, only because school is insanely busy at the moment. Mm. Learning a lot, but like, it's really, really busy. But there have been a few different moments where I've gotten some confirmatory things just around me. Um, I, I was listening to a speaker a few months back and um, at one point I was thinking, you know, I could just choose to live a normal life. I could just choose to be a mom and mm. work as a doctor. But he, this, this guy who was speaking, he was right in front of me and he looks down and he points at me and he's like, um, there's more to life than just having children. And he was like, you need to go. He didn't even know anything about me. Mm. But he was just like, you need to go where, um, where kindness and goodness is needed. And I think that in an industry that's changing a lot, um, where there's a lot of different issues and there's a lot of things that come up, hopefully I can be a person who steps into the environment that can bring, you know, light and warmth and goodness back into an area that tends to change a lot and it's a very changing different changing industry so um, if that's the space that I'm meant to walk in I'm not closing any doors I have a very open heart towards it especially after I get to pass the crown yeah. and to someone else yeah and if you do say yes to that future, <laughs> yeah. do know that we are always here Thank rooting you. for you all the way. Gab, what is your message to the applicants of Miss 2023? Okay, so for Miss 2023, well, to the applicants, number one, I admire your courage um, for just deciding to step into an environment that is going to be challenging. But I want you to know that uh, me and also the four other winners, my runners up, we're all rooting for you. We're supporting you. We wish you all the best. And we're so excited to meet you, not only for us to be someone that you guys look up to, but to also just be your friends. So um, I'm excited to get to know you and I hope that I'll meet you very soon. I'll see you on. October 29 and 30. Yay! And by the way, we would also like to thank The Nest for being yes. our beautiful home for today's interview. So as you can see, festive gid kayo lang mm -hmm. set, no? So The Nest is located along Gerardo Avenue. It's actually a lifestyle concept shop where you can find a really wonderful, wonderful curated mix of arts and crafts by Filipino artisans. So do check it out. And by the way, they are going to have a sale this coming November 18 to 20. So, mag shopping na unya tadiri. Thank you so much, Gab, for your Thank time you. and for everything that you've shared with us and our audience for today. So, there you have it. It's up to you to discover if you really have what it takes to be Miss Cebu 2023. But you'll never know until you try. This has been Andy for Andy's Coveries. <laughs>